Switch me on. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proton Pack is Not a Toy. My name is Matt, and for the last couple of weeks I've been doing some modifications to my HasLab pack, and the front looks pretty good. I still have a few changes I want to make. The back is looking better with the Atlas frame on there, but we still have these large rectangular holes where the straps came through, as well as the small holes where the screws um, are accessed. And I would like to have that covered up. I know some people have been using 3D prints to fill in the larger rectangular holes, but I still would like to have that smooth finish that looks like an aluminum motherboard is on there. But I don't want to cut an aluminum motherboard and figure out how to attach it on here. Um, too much work, too much time, too much money, and figuring out how to make it stay on there and make the inside still accessible seemed like a little bit too much and so I wanted a cheap easy way to be able to put something on there and have it be removable if I needed to. The solution I came up with was a clear piece of plexiglass that I got from Hobby Lobby for like five bucks and uh, this is two feet by three feet and so what I'm going to do is take off the Alice frame and lay it flat, lay the pack flat on a table with this underneath it trace around it and then trim it and then I can attach it to the back with some tape or something and then mark my holes for where I need them for the Alice frame or maybe for the battery panel to access that and then I'm not going to be able to paint it now eventually I'll paint it black but with it being cold outside it's not the best time to paint it but eventually this will be black and it will look hopefully like just having a plain motherboard on there and not having the holes that we see on there as it sits right now. So if you're interested, follow along and we'll see how it turns out in the end. So first things first, I have to remove my Atlas frame. All right, so with that off, I can get the frame out of the way. I decided this would just be easier just to remove the whole front of the pack I needed to get inside there anyway, so this is a good opportunity to just have this part of it on there. So I have the back surface laying flat on the plexiglass. It has this film on it, which I'm going to leave. So that's going to be the surface that I actually mark on. And then I'll trace around it. If you want to take off the, the film, that's fine too. I'm probably going to paint over it anyway. Um, but that's the way I'm going to do it here. I'm going to just use a fine tip sharpie and mark it and then I'll go back and cut it and then if I need to trim it a little bit then I'll do it that way. So I'm lining up a couple of the straighter edges like the side of the power cell and the bottom cosmetic plate down here. Uh, you might want to tape it down to whatever surface you're working on. Um, right now mine is not taped down, but if I feel it starting to slip too much, then I'll go back and do that. So here's where we mark it. I'm gonna go around it a couple of times just to give a good outline for when I cut it. I'm going to try to cut it as much as I can actually on the line or on the outside of the line. So if I do need a trim, I can work my way in. I don't want to cut too much on the inside and then have removed too much material because I can't put any back. This is supposedly like one millimeter thick, so it's not thick at all. It's easy to cut. kind of these straight lines here on the edges first. All right, so I got the basic shape cut out. 
I did notice, this is the first time I've really worked with plexiglass, it does tend to fragment and uh, show more damage when you cut with uh, bigger chunks. So if you keep it little bites at a time, you have a better chance of getting the look that you want. Um, but I'm gonna pull off the film. And I did have little chunks just going everywhere. So um, be aware of that. I'm probably gonna go after this video, go behind myself and, and vacuum. So I'm not stepping on this stuff for time to come. There. So again, it's got some ugly ridges to it. But again, I'm going to probably sand the edges a little bit and it'll be painted. And there is a little spot down here where a chunk came out that I didn't intend to, but it's an afterlife pack. So that's part of the aesthetic, right? If it looked too clean and too good, then it wouldn't look right. Let's see how we did. Need to trim a little more at the top here. All right, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna flip it over the other way. It does look a little big here on the top, so I do need to trim a little bit, but it's not too far off. For these cuts, I am going to try it first with an X-Acto knife just to see the difference. Again, this is the first time I've really cut with this material. If I can prevent these close cuts from shattering, then that would be optimal. So the X-Acto knife is a good way to go for those details. I would go through and score it five or six times on either side and then it was just starting to snap off by itself, which is a good thing. And I was able to really edge that up pretty precisely. And pretty happy with what I have there so far. I am still gonna to have to cut the holes for the uh, screws where my Alice frame connects. Other than that, as far as the shape goes, aside from a little bit of sanding the edges, I think that's good. Here's a close up of what I've been working with. So you can see of the artifacts of it wanting to splinter there along the edges. And it's a little bit smoother on these areas where I trimmed it with an X-Acto knife. You can see a couple of places where it did crack a little bit. And then um, just kind of these streaks are from where I sanded it. Um, still kind of ugly in this area down here, but I can still trim a little bit. This is the worst part where it kind of got jagged on me. So this is my first attempt. Um, I'm not going to rule out going to get another one of these. That's the beauty of it being five bucks. You can go get another one and try it again. And uh, if I do it again, I might just completely just go by and score it all with an X-Acto knife and try to cut it out that way instead of using the scissors to avoid some of these areas here. But again, it's going to be painted. How much of that will be covered when it's painted? I don't know, but I'm pretty happy with the size and shape of it right now. It might be just a little bit large in a few areas in comparison to the motherboard back there. But what I want to do now is go ahead and line it up with the motherboard and map out where my holes are going to be for my Alice frame. For this, I'm going to tape it down. I'm going to kind of get the edges I like dialed in. 
I did put a hat on to tame his hair. Now that I kind of have that taped in place, you can kind of see how the edge is pretty close right here. It might be a little high. And it'll look different when I do have the majority of the pack actually attached to it. Again, I'm just going to be marking the holes. Just going to do an X marks the spot first on these. Okay, now I have the holes cut out on the new motherboard. I'm going to line them up just to make sure that the hardware fits where it's supposed to. That's enough to get the idea that everything just about lines up well. The edges are pretty dang close. Enough to call it good enough for now. So obviously eventually I'll paint this and perhaps maybe find a way to cut a hole here so I don't have to take the pack off, the house frame off to access this area here. Let's see how much this will bend. I mean, obviously the frame will be in the way, but yeah, I'm not going to have enough give to be able to get to those screws. So I'm either going to need to cut a panel to reach here or some kind of access hole, or maybe eventually move the batteries into the side as a USB thing, which some people are starting to figure out how to do. This is what I've got so far. Now, you don't have to use plexiglass. You could use just some black cardstock, some cardboard, uh, anything large enough where it's nice and flat, where you could paint it, uh, or if it's black to start with, poster board. Just remember, however thick it is, you're going to have to account for that, for how deep your screws are going to go into your mounting points. If you're still using the Hasbro mounting points, then just know that whatever thickness this is, that's that much more that those aren't going to bite into those nuts inside the pack. So um, with mine, mine go a little bit farther in because I bought them to be a little bit longer, but this isn't going to cause that much of a change to where I'm not gonna have that much, but if you were to get like a poster board or something, um, or a foam board, then that would definitely cause that to have a, a little more thickness that you're going to have to account for. So I would love to go farther with this, but I'm just not in a situation now where I can really show you the finished product. So this is part one of this video. And then eventually once I'm able to paint it and finish it up, I'll show you what it looks like in another part. So it might be a week or two before I'm actually able to call this finished. So appreciate you guys following along and watching. Uh, go ahead and share your feedback, what you think, anything I could do differently, anything you're doing that I haven't thought of. Um, put that in the comments. I do appreciate everybody watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.